All right, Alexander, let's answer the uh, questions from the live stream with Boris Malagursky. And let's begin with Commando Crossfire, who says, somehow the notion of unalienable liberty got lost. It's really become a question of what liberties will the state assign to individuals, or rather what liberties we will have the strength to cling to. Yeah. I'm, I'm not even, I, 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 I mean, I agree, except I'm becoming increasingly nervous even about the second, actually, because clearly now, um, especially in the US, but in, you know, in Europe too, I mean, there's now a great, a major push to, from the power, the powers that be, to define what liberties we're allowed. Right. From, um, Let's see. Dan Lee, thank you for that super sticker from Red Viking, checking Alex's eyesight to name country flags. So I'm seeing the flags. Um, we're looking at Denmark, Norway, Sweden, and Finland. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Red Viking, for that. Abu Farid said, what's, po what's a possible long-term downside of the financial energy price injections of Germany to its citizens? 200 billion euros were announced lately. It's very simple. I mean, it's, it, it does two things. Firstly, it sustains demand for some for something, gas specifically, which is now in increasingly short supply. So it sets the scene for shortages, and it is also destabilizing the European energy market, which is why countries like Spain and France and Belgium are now all complaining about this, because it means that because prices and consumption in Germany are going to be different from what they are elsewhere, there is a real risk that energy will flow from all of these countries to Germany and that either the Germans will try to keep energy prices stable in Germany at the price of power cuts and blackouts elsewhere in Europe. So it's, it's a, it's a, it's an extraordinarily bad policy, and it's creating. It's also creating ructions. I would also say add something else. It's another massive spend at a time when the taxes are falling and Germany is going into recession, and eventually it is going to feed into higher interest rates, but also uh, a weaker euro. All right, uh, Sharon Sharon Quid Me Too. Thank you for that super sticker. Asben, the Union, thank you for that super sticker. Elena, thank you for that super sticker. Danielle, thank you for that. Jovanovic, thank you for that super sticker. My username says, so glad to hear this interview with Mr. Malagursky. These documentaries are such an eye-opener for those of us in North America who would never have otherwise known what really happened. Thanks so much. Thank you for that. Uh, David S., thank you for that super sticker. Deborah Deville, thank you for that super sticker. Apil Bista, thank you for that super chat. John of NZ says, if the collective West could have beaten Russia, would that have meant global government? Yeah, I mean, I think that's the plan. I think that was the objective. I think that's what they're hoping. I think they're hoping that, you know, they'll beat Russia, grind it down, break it up, perhaps. And then, of course, that will isolate China, cut it, cut it off from its raw materials, uh, you know, um, per, you know, area that the, the Russians would be providing China with grain, oil, gas, metals, all those things. And then you can set up your globalist utopia without any problems. So yeah, that is the plan. Um, it's not working. And because it's not working, they are constantly, because they're not prepared to give up on it, they're constantly escalating in order to achieve it. They're testing the Russians all the time. And um, they realize that China is too too hard a nut, too, too big and too strong. So they're going after the weaker party, which is Russia. The idea is break Russia, get China, get globalism. If, of course, it fails, if they fail in Russia, then the whole thing, of course, fails as well. But then they're dangerous people and we'll see what they'll do. All right. Kadeh, thank you for that super sticker. Steven Janix, thank you for that super sticker. Barry Tremens, thank you for that super sticker. Christopher Powell, thank you for that super sticker. And Possum Power, thank you for that awesome super chat. Got here late. The question is, will Russia win? Yes, I think it will. I mean, in fact, I'm sure it will. Uh, I mean, um, to be absolutely clear, um, just, 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 just to get a sense of the relative difference, 
between the two sides. I mean, Ukraine has been mobilising for seven and a half months. They've gone, I think, through either four mobilisations. I think it's four. And they brought up their military to 300,000 men through, through that process. Russia has already called up 200,000. I mean, out of the called up the 300,000 men. They have already got two hundred thousand, and that was within about a week. So I mean that, and that's just one mobilisation. So that gives you an idea of the difference in resources. This is if the Russians have the political will to see this through. That's the only question. They have the political will to see this through. They they will prevail. All right. Uh... Pause and Power also came up with a follow-up uh, to that question of will Russia win, saying my question was sarcasm. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you, Pause and Power, for that. <laughs> it was a good question, though. It's a very it's a good, relevant, question, yeah. good question. Katya Andrews. Yeah. Katya Andrews, uh, thank you for that super sticker. T-Tom says, uh, Boris, I suggest you make a follow-up to a series, to the series called Prisonanye Admission. Thank you for that. T-Tom. Sigma Wolf says that Duran is number one. Uh, T-Tom says Austria, Germany, Germany, and Vatican were or are primary responsible. U.S., U.K. were or are executioners. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, and T-Tom sends a, sends a follow-up uh, message saying Bosnia was sacrificed for two reasons, to benefit uh, Croatia and to further demonize Serbians. Yeah, sure. Uh, Akraman, thank you for that super sticker. Barry Tremens, thank you for that super chat. Moscow American says, in USA, Diane Sayre is against Schumer, Jeff Young, Abolish, the CIA, Lexington Billboard, both, both, on with, both on with Scott Ritter and CIA's Ray McGovern. When can they be on the program, Alex? Oh, we'll try and get, uh, I mean, we've had, we've had... get in touch Yes. Them. I mean, we've had Scott Ritter, of course, and uh, Ray McGovern. Definitely, we can have him on. I think it'd be a great idea, actually. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and Di Diane, Sarah, I have to, absolutely, yeah, I have to get yeah. in touch yeah. with them. Yeah. Uh, Commander Crossfire, the rhetoric in Washington has done more to defeat liberty than all the armies and police forces in the world. I completely agree. Hmm. Um, Mikhail Flyer says... Uh, Agim Cheku of the KLA bombed the refugee columns. Uh, Titam says, lie number one, Serbs were communists. Communist party was established in Croatia and longest ruled by Croats, Tito and Gorkic. Yes. I mean, the, the, I, I don't want to get into the history of this Yugoslavia. I mean, this is more Boris's field anyway. But I, I think that is true. I think that the... Uh, um, communist leadership of um, Yugoslavia at the beginning. I mean, Tito was definitely a Croat, and I think most of them, a lot of them were were also, yeah. Uh, Tito also says, line number two, army was ruled by Serbs. There was a national key and top generals, including Navy, aviation, were headed by Croats. And two more lies. Line number three, Yugoslavia was ruled by Serbs. In fact, most of the prime ministers were Croats. And lie number four was all Yugoslavian people had the same burden in World War II. Zagreb was not bombed. Belgrade was bombed twice, 1941. Germany in 1944, the U.S. and the U.K. The last point is absolutely true, by the way. I mean, I, I, I'm not saying that the others aren't true. So I, I, to my knowledge, they are. But certainly, there's no doubt at all that if you're talking about the Second World War, um, Serbia suffered by far the most, and the Serb people suffered by far the most as a result of the, uh, uh, the, the German occupation than any other part of Yugoslavia. Galiopi Yanatos, thank you for that awesome super chat. Thank you, Galiopi, for that. Irish Partisan says, the West keeps moving the goalposts for the Serbs in the same way their proxy Israel has done repeatedly with the Palestinians. Yeah, I don't disagree. Mm -hmm. Titam says, omitted fact number one, before the 90s, there were 30% Serbs in Croatia plus Yugoslavians. Yeah. Yeah. And Titam says, good point, statistics. Before 1914, 70% plus of the Bosnian population were Serbs. 
Absolutely, and an awful lot of them. The, one of the reasons the demography changed was because of the unbelievable violence that people in Ser the Serbs in Bosnia experienced during the period of the German occupation during the Second World War, which changed the demographic picture radically. Uh, Christopher Powell says, is John Doe stoned? I don't know. I don't know who John Doe know. is. Maybe yeah. someone in the chat. Kat, thank you for that super sticker. Sebastian, thank you for that super sticker. T. Tom says, World War II Part Four. Germany lost World War II, but party at that time is very alive. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting take. Yeah. Uh, T. Tom says, Alexander, Alexander, you were wrong in one word. U Udashe were accepted. They are. Just look at what recently happened in in Australia in a, in a soccer game. I don't know what happened in Australia in a soccer game, but I, I take your point. I mean, they are accepted. I mean, they've become completely mainstream as far as I can see. But, I mean, Boris was making that very same point um, over the course of the live stream. Uh, RC says, have you guys ever heard of Jim Jatras? He would be a great guest to have on. Oh, he would be a great guest to have And Of course I have, and I've spoken to him and... Uh, you know that he's actually of Greek um, extraction, US dip, former U.S. diplomat. Uh, Gus Antunes says that Durant keeps getting better and better. Thanks for bringing Boris Malagurski. I'm a big fan of his documentaries. Thank you, guys. Thank you for that. Uh, Sharon Quidney, too, says, as, a, as an American, it's sickening to see the U.S. engaging in regime change rather than showing self-determination, uh, rather than allowing self-determination. Absolutely. And... Yeah. and totally contrary to, as I said, its original um, ethos when it was created. After all, the United States is itself an exercise in self-determination. Uh, Ildar Zabirov says, Hello, many Russians feel guilty that Russia let it happen to Serbia. Thank you for your work. It's true. Uh, Lana A. Zankova, thank you for that super sticker. Sharon Quidney, too, says, we're already in World War III, economic sanctions. A lot of people are saying this. I, don't, I think we should be careful. I think economic sanctions are devastating and cruel. But I think when we talk about World War III, for me, that has a very specific meaning. And I'm, I, we are not there yet. And I hope we never are. John, thank you for that super chat. Uh, Gest Gestro Panama, thank you for that super sticker. Uh, Zionic 8, thank you for that super sticker. Alex Glan says, hundreds of thousands demonstrated in Chicago in 1999. The Orthodox parishes have war records of this criminal war. Thanks so much for this live chat. Yeah. It's true. Thank I remember it. Yeah. Yeah. Clancy Wood says, how did the Russians avoid breaking the Budapest mem memorandum with their SMO? Uh. I, I, I ask a very, very interesting and rather complex question. But the point about the, the, the right, the way they do that, I mean, the, I mean, the way they've argued this all along is they say, right, there was the Budapest Memorandum, but there's also the exercise of self-determination. So valid exercise of self-determination by the republics of the Donbass, the Donetsk and Lugansk People's Republics, and also... Ukraine violated or, or, or failed to honour the terms of the Minsk Agreement. So in light of all of that, the UN Charter, which overrides the Budapest Memorandum and all that, that authorises the, the SMO. It's a legal argument. Now, you can accept it, you can reject it. It's not an argument that can be just dismissed or, 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 or brushed aside, or so, so it seems to me. All right, uh, Def Leafy, thank you for a super sticker. Zionic 8, thank you for a super sticker. Uh, T Tom says, it will take more than one generation. Just look at the history is getting rewritten. Yeah. Thank you for that, T Tom. Uh, PJM says, as assalamu alaikum, greetings to all. If Russia comes to the Danube south of Odessa, Will this be good for Serbs, or you think no change for the powder keg that is the Balkans? It'll be good for the Serbs. The closer Russia gets to Serbia, the better for Serbia it is. Now, bear in mind, though, that Romania um, is very sympathetic to the Serbs. So, you know, you mustn't assume that Romania is hostile to Serbia because it's not. 
but if the Russians reach the Danube, then of course it is um, th then of course it is um, helpful to the Serbs. Mm. Uh, Boricius Distinguinados says U.S. military would have decimated Ukraine by now. Well, they would have gone about the war in a completely different way. They would have created a desert and they'd have called it peace, which is the way in which the United States conducts its wars. But I tell you something else. Um, it would not have been the end of fighting in Ukraine, because when a country is devastated, destroyed in that kind of way, that continues wars. Just look what has happened everywhere else where the United States has waged war. Libya, Afghanistan, Iraq, wherever. Wars continue. Even in the Balkans, wars continue. Uh, Clancy Woods says, how much do you think Australia would be affected by the economic collapse coming to the West? It's a very good question. I mean, I don't know the Australian economy particularly well. I mean, um, to a, to a great extent, it's a still a commodities-based economy. So that must be actually useful. That must be a strong card for Australia. I mean, you know, they're, as far as I know, self-sufficient in food, self-sufficient in energy. They have abundant raw materials. You know, you can imagine them, you know, surviving. They can keep going. They're not as dependent on imports of these vital things as other Western countries are. But, of course, they are connected. They're, they're an intimate part of the Western financial and trading system. And if that collapses, it's bound to have a massive problems for Australia as well. Mr. Wonderful says, uh, President Trump was very critical of NATO. If we make it to 2024, do you think he would be capable of withdrawing the U.S. from it in his second term? Yes. It's the answer, but whether he will or won't is, of course, an, uh, an unknown question. But I think he's probably more critical of NATO now than he was when he was president. But I think he also understands better the enormous dangers of trying to move against NATO, too. So what he's going to do, I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, Elaine Magson says, any hope that international law can survive? Well, there's always hope. We should never give way to despair. Um, it has been tested like in no other time since the fall of Berlin in 1945. I mean, the point about the Second World War, the whole point about the Nuremberg trials was to try to rebuild international law on the ashes of the Third Reich. Now... <laughs> It's astonishing to see the party, the country that played the biggest role in that, which is the United States, now become in, a, in so many ways the greatest danger to international law. Right. Uh, let's see, David Oderosa, thank you for that super sticker. Linda Key, thank you for that super chat. Uh, Lumpia Logic says, degrowth versus pro-growth, green fascists versus pro-industrialization, hegemonic versus, versus anti-hegemonic. Unipolar versus multipolar, colony versus sovereign. Yeah, I mean, all, the, all, these, all these binaries Thank are absolutely that. right. And they're absolutely, I mean, excellently both, actually. Radovid says, thank you very much for enlightening the Yugoslav issue. I can also confirm that Croatia has a serious extremism problem. Not all, but big enough that I had personal experience with it. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, let's see, Linda, I think that super sticker. Rifi zero zero says Biden impeached over Nord Stream, over Nord Stream two. Rifi YouTube channel. Well, it's possible, but I don't think it's going. I don't think it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. I think if there's going to be an impeachment, it's going to be on things like the the laptop and the contents thereof. I think that's much more likely. <coughs> yeah. Sad fair. Thank you for that super sticker. Oris Land, thank you for the super chat. Bauke says, what is Serbia's relation to China, especially with regards to military assistance? I don't know. I think it's pretty close, or at least it's friendly. Um, certainly the, during the uh, pandemic period, the Chinese provided help to Serbia at that time. And, you know, so I think they're on good terms. I don't think the Chinese are involved in providing Serbia with military help. By the way, uh, since we're bringing up the topic of China and Serbia, don't forget that during the 1999 NATO bombing of Yugoslavia, the Chinese embassy was bombed. 
and the Chinese themselves have never forgotten that. It comes up repeatedly in the Chinese media. Uh, Orisland, thank you for that super chat. Sparky says, good work, keep on trucking. Eugene Hong says, the CCP is no friend to anyone. Their price tag is greater than even the US. I'm sure that they are a country, that they're a political entity that conduct, pursues their own interests. Of that, I have absolutely no doubt. And interests are paramount over friendships. But they have partners, and that may not be quite the same as friends, but they do have partners, and at the moment I think they need those partners because they feel themselves to be challenged by the US. Fraction Zero One, thank you for that uh, super chat. Nadia says, good morning. Thank you, Nadia, for that. Nadia also says, uh, when they bring in the fake ET, alien angels, everybody will love everybody. Well, except for about 144,000 of us, flying saucer, space green, Rojek star, space invaders. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, Nadia uh, Korum Van Vantag says, thank you, guys. I watch every day without fail. I suffer from depression and live in the Baltics. I wonder how many people like me suffer more and more each day from suffocating environment these governments are creating. Keep up your great work. Uh, Tuko 76, the war in Yugoslavia and then Serbia was a blueprint for Afghanistan, Iraq, Libya, and Syria. Everything we are witnessing today can be traced back to the war on Serbia. NATO needed to justify its existence, so it created a villain. And cast itself as the savior. The largest U.S. military base in Europe is in occupied Kosovo. I agree. Totally. With every part of that. Uh, Blue Note One says, what a great group and platform. Good job, Alexander and Alex. Uh, thank you very much for that. Euro Gabor says, how much a shadow the involvement of the first Orban ca cabinet in the bombing of Serbia cast over the Hungarian-Serb relations, along with the recognition of Kosovo's independence? I don't know is the short answer. I think that's something that Boris can answer better than me. I think at the moment, whatever shadow was cast, there's now a community of interest between the two. They find that they have the same adversary, which is the collective West. So back in those days, and it, you must remember this was a different time, and, you know, different politi uh, political leaders change. I think that in those days, um, um, political stances were taken, which might not be the same as today. Tech Dive says, students believe Dr Dragno, D-R-G-N-L, uh, which has extension com, i.e. website, a CIA hack as it starts as it starts to teach and applies it to Russia segmentation. Also, many universities push us to create accounts there. Your insight. I don't know about this. I mean, and this isn't something I know anything about at all. So I go and give you insight about uh, it. I mean, I'm sure that the CIA get up to all kinds of things like that. And I wouldn't be surprised if this is the case in point. But I can't say one way or the other because I just don't know. All right. Digital Nomad, thank you for that super chat. Seku Drama, thank you for that super chat. And Paul, thank you for that super chat. And that is it. Thank you very much to everybody that sent us questions for the live stream with Boris Malakovsky. Thank you.